Welcome, this video will introduce you to the changes and new features in Sage 100 version 2024.0. We will start with the desktop changes and then move to the global changes. From there we will talk about the module specific changes and new features. We encourage you to review the What's New document for more details on the topics. We have over 30 changes or new features, so let's get started. Let's start with the new features to the desktop. A new resources button has been added to the help tab on the launcher ribbon. This button launches the Sage Support Resource Center, where you can access the community hub, the knowledge base, product documents, downloads of software and updates, Sage University, and more. Because of this change, previous buttons for product documents, knowledge base, downloads and updates, online community, Sage University, and order checks and forms have all been removed. This update simplifies the ribbon which had become quite lengthy over time. The Information Center has been updated to streamline multiple assets into a single resource center as we just saw in the ribbon, and simplifying this page for you too. This is our second path available to get to the Resource Center. As in the previous consolidation, buttons have been removed and replaced with a link to the Resource Center, where all the information is found. The four tiles in the middle of the page have a couple of changes. Product update remains, but Sage City is now under resources so its tile is now replaced with product documents. Learning resources tile is now share your ideas, and the customer portal is now maximize Sage 100. The following changes are carried throughout multiple modules. First, during the installation of Sage 100, it defaults to the bit version of Windows you are running. Therefore, if you are on a 64-bit version of Windows, Sage 100 will default to the 64-bit version. This feature improves the onboarding workflow and reduces the potential for issues. Next, the demo data has been given Phase 1 of the Ultimate Refresh. Inventory items and descriptions in Sage 100 demo data have been updated to use current industry terms. A couple of changes have been made in answer to the issue that display of extended item descriptions in grids disrupts workflow. The first change comes in the form of the Inventory Management Security option found in Role Maintenance. Allow automatic display of full extended item description when not in a grid, being renamed to Allow automatic display of full extended item description. The second change is by making the functionality optional through this option. It improves workflow. Please note that when the security option is not selected, and if the item description has been moved to the primary grid, the extended item description dialog will not automatically display as you are entering the line item. This option applies in all locations where you can enter an extended item description. Library master, accounts receivable, sales order, purchase order, production management, and return merchandise authorization. The following enhancements have been made to improve the delete and change utilities, which can be found in most modules. You can now access and enter information when data entry is in progress, or the main entity task is in use. For example, you can access delete and change vendors when invoice entry is in progress, or when vendor maintenance is in use. File checking will now occur when clicking the proceed button. For example, the delete and change vendor process will run if tasks associated with the vendor table are not in use and all accounts payable data entry in progress have been posted. Tab order has changed. The change tab is first, followed by the delete tab. The vendor name, as we see in our example here, as well as the customer name, or the item description will now display for starting and ending codes in each utility. New security options in Role Maintenance allow you to set up which users can perform the delete or change processes. Modules impacted are Inventory Management, Accounts Receivable, Accounts Payable, General Ledger, Sales Order, Purchase Order, Production Management, and Return Merchandise Authorization.
In addition, the following changes have been made to General Ledger Change Account. You can now access and enter information when data entry is in progress or the main entity task is in use. File checking occurs upon clicking the Proceed button. The change process can be performed only if tasks associated with the accounts table are not in use and all data entry in progress have been posted. The next enhancement improves security compliance by expanding the data tract. The information is then printed on the audit trail report for customers, vendors, employees, and items. All modifications, deletions, or additions to data associated with the main entity will now be monitored. Our example here is AP Vendor Audit Report, but this applies to all audit reports. The screen for each audit report has been modified to include a checkbox for all tasks to be tracked for changes. When setting up a new company in each module, the setup option will default to track all changes and track changes in detail will default to yes. In addition, audit reports can now be printed when the entity is in use. A new audit activity viewer has been added to the more button in customer maintenance, vendor maintenance, employee maintenance, and item maintenance, and will only be accessible if the user has access to the audit report for the module in role maintenance. The modules affected are accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory management, and payroll. Also, in Advanced Lookup Engine, better known as ALE Lookups, the search value will no longer be cleared when the operand is changed. Now let's move to changes made to accounts payable. In Vendor Maintenance on the Statistics tab, the date established field has been added. It defaults to the system date for new vendors. However, you can edit this field with the appropriate security setup. This field will display in Vendor Inquiry, as we see in this screenshot. Back to Vendor Maintenance. We see on the Additional tab a new checkbox labeled W9 Form on File, which when selected, enables you to track W9 Forms for a vendor. This checkbox is enabled if 1099 Reporting is selected on the main tab of AP Options. Additionally, you can now retain a vendor taxpayer ID, if the type is business, even if it is not a 1099 vendor. Or if the type is individual, you can retain the social security number when they are not a 1099 vendor. This also allows you to distinguish between 1099 vendors and non-1099 vendors. Both fields are encrypted. Moving on to inventory management, we have already talked about the ability to suppress the automatic display of extended item descriptions. Another addition for subscription installs only is a new toggle button was added to Inventory Management Lot Serial Inquiry. You can toggle between two views, one where the item is displayed in the list view. And the other view that is filtered by item. Are you utilizing virtual storage spaces for handling scrap, returns, and multi-bin operations? Do you find you need to eliminate these warehouses when they become obsolete, or to modify or remove a warehouse in instances where the physical location undergoes closure or relocation? If you do, delete warehouse and change warehouse utility tasks have been added to the inventory management utilities menu to handle it. Deleting warehouses is necessary when virtual warehouses for scrap, returns, and multibin are no longer needed, or when a physical warehouse location closes. Use change warehouses to renumber or merge existing warehouse codes. Both utilities feature the flexibility to access and enter information when data entry is in progress or item maintenance is in use. File checking occurs upon clicking the Proceed button. Please refer to help for the details on how to carry out a change or delete. Let's look at Library Master, which now has the option for a restricted mode. If you are an administrative user, you have a new restricted mode option in Administrator Tools. This option allows you to prevent users from logging into Sage 100 so you can install an update, test a modification, add user-defined fields, and more. Working through Role Maintenance Security Options tab, 
you select allow access during restricted mode for those roles you want to have the ability as we see in our screenshot. Turning on restricted mode will not force users currently logged in out of Sage 100, but instead when launching a new task, a message appears telling them to log out. In Library Master, a new process all tasks checkbox has been added to the schedule tab in task scheduler. If this checkbox is checked, all tasks in the task scheduler schedule tab are forced to execute even if one or more of them fail. Any errors or warnings will be noted in the job log and email notifications. A new option, Enable Update Search Index, was added on the Preferences tab in System Configuration. If this option is selected, as customer, employee, vendor, item, or account records are updated, they appear in the autocomplete search results without having to run the Build Search Index utility. We recommend you add the Build Search Index utility to Task Scheduler and run it periodically. For paperless office users, several enhancements were made to the reports and electronic delivery tasks. In the Report Viewer, the report settings used for printing will now be displayed in the viewer, so you can easily identify reports without having to open individual PDFs. Electronic Delivery Message Maintenance has a report setting token available that can be included in the subject line and the body of the email. Electronic Delivery Enhancements include a detail button to display a list of documents included. The error during Electronic Delivery dialog will now be resizable for easier reading. Also, a one-click copy to clipboards button can be found in the error during Electronic Delivery dialog box, saving at least two steps. Inform Maintenance an Ignore All Errors checkbox allows you to set the default for this option in error during electronic delivery. Additionally, a faster utility for relinking paperless office log records was added to the Sage 100 Utilities screen, which you access by entering asterisk UTL in the File Run prompt. In Viewer Tasks, the log record you've selected in the list box now persists after clicking a button on the sidebar. Let's see what's new in Production Management. A new lookup button for the activity code has been added to activity code maintenance. This enhancement simplifies the search process by allowing you to perform a separate lookup specifically for the activity code, rather than combining it with the work center. A new cost rollup register field in production management called Include Materials From allows you to select how you want to calculate the cost of the bill. Please note that the module code for production management is now PM, from JT. When you convert data from an earlier version of Sage 100, the converted company data files are changed to use the PM prefix. Let's look at the following changes in purchase order. In Receipt of Goods Entry, on the Lines tab, a new feature has been introduced, the Clear Back Order Upon Accept checkbox. This option allows you to conveniently close partially received purchase orders. You can also access the Apply Purchase Orders dialog from the lines if you need to apply another order, or if you want to manually change the Clear Back Order option for one of the orders. To access this feature, ensure that the Allow User to Clear Back Ordered Quantity in Receipt of Goods Entry Security option is enabled in Role Maintenance. When the Clear Back Order option is selected on a partially received order in Receipt of Goods Entry, the order status will be set to Received after it has been updated. This is a new status that will be used when an order is partially received and the back ordered has been cleared, and when the order is completely received but not yet invoiced. Then when the purchase order is invoiced, the status will change from Received to Completed. You can print orders and reports based on the new received status. Let's move on to return merchandise authorization. When multiple sales orders are applied to an invoice, you can now access the following details in return merchandise authorization. We'll begin with RMA receipts entry in RMA lines tab. When you select the invoice number lookup, the sales order number and customer purchase order columns have been added. Also, multiple appears in the sales order number and customer purchase order columns when more than one order has been applied to the invoice. In RMA item selection, the sales order number and customer purchase order columns have been added to the list box. Previously, only the primary sales order and customer PO were displayed. 
Moving to our final topic, sales orders. A new option has been added to the Forms tab in Sales Order Options. The option, Print Forms for Generated Back Orders has the following choices, None, which is the default, Order, Picking Sheet, and Order and Picking Sheet. The update will read the new option, and set the print flag in the SO Sales Order header table to Yes, and set the printed flag to No. You no longer need to call up the back order, and manually select the print order and print pick sheets checkboxes. Also, on the User Maintenance Preferences tab, an option has been added to display the ordered quantity in red text. On the Lines tab, in Sales Order Entry and Sale Order Invoice Entry, when the quantity exceeds a specific value. In the Sales Order Ordered Quantity in Red when Field, you can select to display the ordered quantity in red text when it exceeds available quantity in the warehouse, when it exceeds quantity on hand, or when the available quantity is lower than the reorder point. As a result of the new option to display sales ordered quantity in red, we rearranged the fields. When initiated, it will apply for new entries, as well as when recalling existing entries. One more important message for inventory requirement planning users to regenerate your IRP data. If you're upgrading from Sage 120.23.2 or earlier, you must regenerate your IRP data file to apply the latest schema changes and fixes. Improvements have been made to correctly link components back to parent items, particularly when the same subassembly appears on the bill of material multiple times. This video introduced you to the changes and new features in Sage 100 version 2024.0. We started with the desktop changes, and then moved to the global changes. From there we talked about the module-specific changes and new features. Many enhancements have been made in Sage 100 version 2024.0. Luckily, you can view this video as many times as you want. Thank you for watching and enjoy the new enhancements.